welcome back to another Swift tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to drag around a view or uh, any UI element for that matter. So basically what you see here, we've got this blue view and if I tap and drag my finger around, the view follows, uh, follow suit. So we're going to take a look at how to build this. Uh, no, no frameworks, no pods, using our own code, uh, all that good stuff. So make sure you destroy that like button down below as always for the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't subscribed already and enjoy the videos, have been watching, please do hit subscribe also. Helps me make more videos for all of you, uh, keeps me motivated. That said, get Xcode ready, get excited. Again, hit that like button and let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so as always, we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with a single view application and I'm gonna go ahead and call this drag around view, hit enter, save it wherever you'd like. I'm gonna throw it in my iOS Academy folder here and let's jump right in. So the first thing we wanna do as always again is pick a simulator, go ahead and hit run to get this guy booted up. Let me also expand my Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work. And we're gonna be working in the view controller for the entirety of this video. So go ahead and open that up. Let me close this right panel, we don't need that. And let's start talking about dragging around a view. So the very first thing we need is a view. So I'm gonna create a private view on here. We'll call it uh, my view. And I'm gonna do it in the way that I usually do my UI. And we'll simply return it here. And let's also give this view a background color. And we'll pick a link, which is a blue. The next thing we want to do, of course, is add it as a sub view. So we're going to say view, add sub view, my view. And then we also want to center this view. So we're going to override view to layout sub views, call super view to layout sub views, and set the center to view.center. Now we also need to give this a width and a height. Uh, and we're going to hard code it for this video. So we can just do it in here. And we're going to say the X and Y are zero and the width and height are 200. So go ahead and hit Command R to build and run, and you should have a blue square in the middle of your screen like so. So now we can get to the good part, which is how do we detect touches to actually drag this guy around where our finger is. So this is pretty interesting because a lot of times us iOS devs don't really think about how the capacitive touch screen on your device works, whether it be an iPad or a phone or what have you. And if you think about it, that's really how all this uh, magic is enabled, right? So we, th we think about tap gestures sometimes, and we think about how they actually work. Well, under the hood, there are three core functions that are driving uh, touch input uh, interaction. And we're gonna override all three of them. And I'm gonna do it in a extension here, just so we can visually keep the code separate. And I'm gonna add a mark comment in here. And those three functions uh, are touches began, touches moved, and touches ended. So let's talk about all three of these. So they're ordered here the way I've added them and they're pretty self-explanatory. This gets called when a touch is detected, when a touch is moved around, AKA you slide your finger around, and when you lift up your finger from the screen, uh, AKA a touch ended. So I'm sure a lot of you have uh, added a action to a button and you always select for the most part, the event of touch up inside. And unfortunately, most people don't really take the time to figure out what the heck that means. But what it actually means is the user touched down on the screen and then lifted up. So it's a combination of began and ended. 
So touches began to be clear occurs when a user touches down on the screen and they haven't moved their finger yet, so this isn't called, but they also haven't lifted their finger yet, so this isn't called. So we're gonna use uh, all three of these in combination to get our view to be uh, draggable and movable. So the first thing we wanna do is on our actual view, we wanna enable user interaction. So we're gonna do it in here. We'll simply assign this to true in this declaration for it. And the next thing we wanna do in touches began is figure out if the touch occurred uh, in our my view instance. So if someone touches inside uh, this view controller's view, any of the white space, we don't wanna trigger it. So I actually haven't used touches in a while, so we'll figure out if I remember this. But we wanna get the uh, first touch, I shall just call it touch, out of this inbound touches set. So we can go ahead and get the first touch out like that. And if we don't have a touch, we can simply return out of here. Uh, we then wanna get the location of the touch. So we can say location is touch, uh, location in view, and this is gonna return a CG point. And we wanna basically figure out, uh, get the location in my view. Uh, I think the other thing we can alternatively do is say if my view uh, dot bounds contains the touch location, then we can continue. We know we've touched inside of it. Let's see why we're getting this warning. Okay, that went away. Perfect. For now, let's just print out did touch in blue view. So anytime we tap inside of the white space, we shouldn't get it. But as soon as we tap in here, we should get this printed out, which in fact we do. So let me expand this console here and close this right panel. So that is touches began. So we're clearly able to pick up touch gestures uh, on our blue view and nothing on this white view. So when we tap down, we now wanna be able to drag it around and we want the square to follow where our finger is. So also pretty simple. We're gonna start by adding a private mutable bool on this class and we're gonna call it is dragging. And by default, it'll be false. And if we tap in the view, we're gonna say is dragging is true. And once the user lifts up their finger, we're gonna say is dragging is false because they're no longer tapping down. And in touch is moved, we can say guard is dragging. We want to make sure the user is dragging. They're in that state. If they're not, we can simply return out of it. But if they are dragging, we want to update the my view uh, origin for the X and Y based on where the touch is occurring. So we want to not only figure out uh, is dragging, but we also want to get the touch out of this set of touches parameter. So similarly, we're going to say touches dot first. And we want to make sure both of these are valid. And if they are, we want to get the touch location. So we're going to say touch, uh, touch dot location. And we want to get the location in the container view, which is simply view, which is the view controller's view. Uh, we don't want to get the, the location in the blue view because we're dragging the blue view around in the parent view. And once we have done that, we can assign my view, the origin X to location.x. And you guys are gonna see a weird little quirk about this as soon as I run it. You can also assign the Y like so, and go ahead and hit command R to build and run. So we tap down and as soon as we start moving, you notice that our, when we drag the blue view jumped so our touch position is the top left corner, AKA the origin of the view. The reason is, is because we're assigning the X and Y of the view to the location touch in the view. But what we would rather want to do and say is, uh, so there's actually a couple ways you can do it. But the way I like to do it is when you start tapping and dragging around, it should uh, be attached to the center of the view, wherever your tap is. So, um, what I'm going to say is the X and Y is the location uh, of the touch, the X, 
And we're also going to add the width of my view divided by two, which will center it for us. So we're going to say frame size width over two. And similarly for the Y, we're going to do that, but it'll be by the height divided by two. And hopefully that math was right. Ooh, I meant to subtract it actually. We want to actually subtract it. So the touch, so right now if I tap and drag, you can see that uh, we, our calculation is right, but it's uh, a halfway down and to the right. So we want to actually go ahead and subtract this. And now as we drag around, you see, even if we tap it here, it jumps to be centered. Now, some people like it to stay at the touch position. So in that case, what you should do is you should actually save the delta of the X and Y. So let's say we have an old X, let's say it's zero by default and an old Y. When touches began is called, you can say old X is location dot X and old Y is location dot Y. And then in this function, what you can do is you can calculate the difference from where you touched and where you would like the movement to begin. However, for the purposes of this video, we won't do that. But now you can drag around your view uh, and it's fairly simple as you can see here. We're simply overriding some pretty low level, uh, I don't even know if I would call them low level, but some pretty common functions of touch interaction. Now there are other ways to definitely do drag around. Uh, for views, you can use a pan gesture or a variety of other things but this is the simplest and in my opinion, the coolest implementation. So that's where I'm gonna call it a wrap for this video. If you haven't destroyed the like button already, make sure you do so for that YouTube algorithm as always. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit that while you're at it too for my daily Swift videos. I think something like 80% of you haven't subscribed but watch consistently. So I'd super appreciate a subscribe button hit. Comment down below if you've got any questions, errors, just wanna say hi, have a video suggestion, whatever it may be. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.